Happy Sunday and welcome to City Life Church. Whether you're watching church online or you're here in person, we just wanna say thank you for joining us. We are excited to worship with you today. If this is your first time with us, we would love to know. We have a super quick connect card for you to fill out. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, you'll see the description tab at the top right corner of your screen. Click the link that says see more and in that section, a link for our first time viewer card will pop up. If you're joining us from church online, you'll see a banner on your screen right now that you can click to open up the connect card. If you're with us in person today, would you text the word welcome to the number right here on your screen? A link will be sent to your cell phone for our digital connect card. However, and wherever you're joining us today, would you please take a few moments to fill that card out? We would love to connect with you and thank you personally for visiting us here today at City Life Church. Now, if you're joining us from church online, here's a couple of quick tips for navigating your experience. As I just mentioned, if you're joining us by Facebook Live at your top right corner of the screen, there's a description tab. If you open that, you'll find links to your online giving, our City Life Kids online experience, all of our social media platforms, as well as a link to download our City Life app. If you're joining us through Church Online, all the items I just mentioned can be found by clicking the Notes tab on the right hand of your screen. And if you're joining us in person, open the City Life app on your smartphone or tablet, and you'll find today's message notes, online giving, and even a Bible if you forgot yours at home. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms, and if you consider City Life Church your home, download the app. It's gonna give you access to all sorts of content and updates about what's going on right here at City Life Church. Now, if you're watching church online, you're also gonna see multiple banners or links popping up on your screen throughout the service. So make sure to keep an eye out for those. And please feel free to let us know how God is moving in your life. And if you need prayer for anything, we have a team waiting to hear prayer requests and stand in faith with you, believing that God is going to move mountains in your life. Thank you again for joining us here at City Life Church. We are excited to worship with you today. Now get ready, service is about to begin. The 
sing this out this morning. Your presence. Your presence hey. is in the
So do you serve a God like that, a God that can turn any situation around, that can change the ashes of our lives into beauty? What an incredible God that we serve, and it is so amazing that we get to serve Jesus alongside each and every one of you, all of our church family online. City Life, can we just put our hands together this morning and just thank God for the community that he has given us? Amen. It is so great seeing each and every one of you today. To all of our church family that is watching online today, welcome. We are so thankful that you are tuning in with us today. Our family is not the same without you. And so even though you are not in the building, your presence is felt. And we just pray that God would just invade that living room, invade that office space, wherever you may be. And so again, we are just so thankful that each and every one of you are here. And we are so thankful to have all of you, all of you that came uh, out today in person. We are so thankful to be worshiping with you today. One more time, City Life, can we just give God praise as you are seated? And man, you may be seated today. If you are here for the very first time, we want to welcome you. You could be anywhere today, but you're with us. You could be viewing or watching anything today. But... You're watching with us today, and we are so thankful for that. If this is your first time viewing or your first time in person with us, if you would do us a favor, there's a number coming up on your screen right now. If you would text the word welcome to the number coming up on your screen right now, we would love to connect with you. Uh, we're not going to spam you in any way. We would just love to know where you're watching from. We would love to know how we can partner with you in prayer. And if you are in service with us today, um, we have a gift for you. And so if you would head out to our guest reception area, which is located in our lobby, um, right outside the double doors, right behind you, as soon as service is over, we'd have some smiling faces behind some masks that would love to just connect with you for a few moments. And like I said, we have a gift. It's just our way of saying thank you for being with us today. And um, we are just so honored that you would be with us. City Life, can we just welcome all of those that are watching or that are here today for the first time? Oh, come on, City Life. Can we just welcome all of our first time guests today? Amen, amen. Well, we have got some amazing things that are happening around here at City Life. And I mentioned last week that our angel tree is out in the lobby. And um, we're going to be partnering with some single moms and some foster care homes this year to provide uh, uh, gifts for, um, uh, for foster care children and for single moms. And um, uh, last week, it was amazing, last week we had every single angel that was hanging on the tree was taken last week in both of our services. And so, um, just so you know, today um, we've got that tree loaded back up. And so if you would like to partner with us in providing Christmas this year for um, uh, some uh, children that are just going to be ecstatic when they wake up on Christmas morning and see presents under their tree, um, you can stop by the tree there. Or as we get ready to give, there's a spot on there that says Angel Tree. You can just donate right there. And um, we just thank you for partnering with us in ministry. But we're getting ready to take up our tithes and offerings today. And on the screen behind me, there are four ways for you to be able to give. You can sign right into your City of Life app. You can text the giving. There is a secure giving envelope in the seat back in front of you. And if you brought your offering physically with you today, you can drop it in that envelope and drop it in the offering containers on your way out of service today. And if you're worshiping with us online and you would prefer to mail in your offering, you can grab our uh, address right there on the City of Life app or website. But I want to thank you for staying so faithful in your, your giving because we're able to do ministry. I just talked about what we're getting ready to do this Christmas for children that otherwise would maybe not have Christmas this year. But City Life is stepping in to do that. Just yesterday, we were able to minister to our single moms group, and they had a cookie exchange and was able to just kind of uh, sit down and relax and breathe a little bit as we took care of their children in other rooms and just minister to the moms um, to where they were at. And City Life, you made that happen. You made that possible, that you're making ministry happen. And it reminds me of a scripture that I want to read to you today. 
In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it simply says this, Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father. That when we give, we are allowing our light to shine. These things that we're able to participate in, we are allowing our light to shine. You know, this morning at our 730 prayer, as the team got together to, to pray over today and pray over you, we were praying and, and somebody said this. They said, as we do what we do, God, you do what you do. And that struck me right there. Because in this moment, we're getting ready to do what we do. And that's to give out of the blessings that God has blessed us with. But we can give because we know that when we do what we do, that God's going to do what he does. And it reminded me of a scripture in Romans chapter 4 verse 21 and it simply says this being fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he has promised city life I want to remind you that as we do what we do as we do our part to make ministry happen to give above and beyond what we have been blessed with that God's going to do his part he's going to partner with you and connect with you and that every need that you have he's going to begin to work in it amen Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you so much for today. Father, for this opportunity, God, to be able to give. Father, knowing, God, that we can do what we do because, God, we know that when we do, God, you do what you do. And so, Father, we pray today, God, that as we give of our tithes and of our offerings, God, to make ministry happen, Father, that you would take it and use it to further your kingdom. God, that lives would come to know your son, Jesus. And, Father, that you would bless your people. Father, we give you the praise and the glory. In your name we pray. And everybody said.
I'll give him praise today. You know, that's the story of Jesus. He made a way where there was no way. Father, we pray today that your anointing that is in this room would change every life. Let us leave knowing, Father, that greater days are before us. That you make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, I pray your word would come alive. It would change us. It would challenge us. Whether we're at church online or sitting in this room. Father, I pray, Father, that you would saturate us with your presence. We love you today and we bless you. We thank you for the gift of Jesus. Amen. Would you celebrate him one more time? Amen. I just want to share something with you before we, um, before we go into the Word today. Our guest um, is locked down for our New Year's Day service, always one of our, our favorite services of the year on New Year's Day at 7 o'clock. We're going to have from Maverick City Music, Dante Bo is going to be with us. And it's going to be an amazing, amazing. If you know anything about Maverick City, they're one of the really um, groups God has raised in the season. And Dante Bo is such an amazing, amazing worship leader. So we are so excited and fortunate to have him. And we're excited about that. Now we're going to walk into 2021 declaring that it's a new season. It's a new day. Better things, greater things. Anybody believing for some better in your next season? How many believe in the next few weeks God's going to do some great things? Amen. Going to wrap up this year. 
Amen. You may be seated if you're in person. We love you, church online. So great to have you today. We're going to jump into the Word, and we're just going to continue in our series that we started last week, Home Alone. I told you the last few weeks I watched a nostalgic movie that was uh, one that came out when I was just uh, a young teenager, and it was about a young boy named Kevin. His parents went to France and left him home alone. And can you imagine the parents' experience and young Kevin's experience? But young Kevin was resilient. Kevin took hold of the moment. You know, there's something about taking hold of the moments in our life. And so many times we're looking for seasons and God gives us moments. But many times it's the moments that thrust us into a season. You know, our story here at City Life is a story of moments where God gave us doorways to greater places. But you have, and I have to make choices to take hold of God moments in our life. And I'm believing there's some God moments in 2020 that is setting us up for 2021. There's some God moments in our now that's causing things to work in our tomorrow. There's some things that we're battling today that will give us testimonies in days to come. And when you realize that God gives you moments today, well, yeah, Kevin, he just took hold of the moment. He took hold of the house. He began to work in the house and provide for the house, get the house in order. He defended the house when bandits came to steal his stuff. And eventually, at the end of the story, Kevin helped restore another family and another home. You know, that's really the redemptive plan for your life and my life. And that's the reason Jesus came, not just for young Kevin. I'm joking. Man, nine o'clock, you quiet today. <laughs> Shopped out all week long. Anybody been to the mall this week? Anybody been to Amazon this week? All right, there you go. I was in Target the other day looking for something and the lady said, I think you could probably find it cheaper at Amazon. I was like, wow. But, but here's what you have to know. That when God gives you a moment, it's up to you to invite his presence into that moment. I want to talk to you today about the gift of presence. In Luke chapter 2, we find that we've now moved past the announcement to Mary and the prophecy to Zechariah and Elizabeth about John. Joseph is on board and the plan of God is moving. You know, it's amazing how that God takes different people, speaks different things, but it's all a part of a master plan. God's working in you and he's working in me, but when he brings us together, we're all pieces of this puzzle that begins to present a mosaic of the, king, mosaic of the kingdom of God in the earth. And he takes your life and my life and he intertwines us together. Everybody's now on board, Zechariah and Elizabeth. They've had John. Mary and Joseph are getting ready to travel to Bethlehem to give birth to Jesus. And in verse 1 it says this of Luke chapter 2. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quintus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, watching over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rest. Or maybe your Bible says, goodwill toward men. We find that the setting is this. God has spoken, 
And now God is getting ready to deliver his word. And any time God speaks, there's a due date on that word. Any time God speaks to you, there's always a due date. Never an expiration date, but always a due date. Because what you have to understand, God is aligning his will and his purpose in the earth. And the Bible said it's now time. And in this time, we find that God is bringing prophecies of an Old Testament together. And he uses a census to get Joseph and Mary to Bethlehem. Because the prophecies in the Old Testament were that the Messiah would come from Bethlehem. And I am telling you, there's things that God arranges in your natural to align you with his will and purpose. And what you may not understand, some of the things that you think are separating you from your purpose are actually aligning your purpose. Some of the people that have gone and some of the people that have come, some of the things you've lost or maybe the job you had or maybe the job you've now gotten are aligning the purpose in your life. And God uses this sense of to get Joseph and Mary because they were of the lineage of David so they would have to register in Bethlehem. So they get on a donkey and they ride through the night to get to Bethlehem. They get to the hotel and there are no rooms in the inn. Anybody ever tried to book a hotel, maybe traveling, and you could not find a hotel? No hotels.com back then. No orbits. No Marriott app. No room in the inn. So finally they find a place in a stable. And the Bible says something happens. It's the story of the gospel. It's the invading presence of God that takes ordinary places and transitions them to supernatural platforms. It's the whole story of the good news where he says, let me show you what I can do with ordinary places, people, and things. And the Bible said the minute that his presence arrived in the form of a baby, this stable now becomes the throne room of a king. And what you have to understand, there's some things working here. First of all, you have to understand God sees. God sees all of it. He sees everything about you. He sees where you're at. You ever wondered, Lord, do you see where I'm at? What I'm walking through? I've been there. Lord, do you see what I'm battling and what I'm facing? Do you see the things that I'm having to endure? God sees. God sees that they're a young couple. God sees that they're riding through the night on the back of a donkey. God sees that there's no room in an inn. God sees that they're now in a stable. But not only does God see, God hears. God hears every word you speak. God hears every prayer you pray. God hears every worship song you deliver, even though it's hard to sing them. God hears every murmur in the night. God hears everything you say. Matter of fact, the Bible said he's chronicling those things in the heavens. He's taking note of those things in the heaven. Not only does he see, but he hears. So I would challenge you, just keep praying. Just keep singing. Just keep petitioning the heaven because God hears what you are saying. Never forget that God hears your prayer, not just a prayer of a pastor, not just the song of a worship team, but every believer that opens their mouth, God hears what they say. But not only does God hear, not only does God see, you have to understand God knows. God knows the master plan. That's why I said in Jeremiah to the people of God, I know the plan that I have for you. You may not know it. You may not see it. Maybe you've not heard about it yet, but I know the plan that I have for you, and this plan is going to blow your mind. Mary and Joseph, this plan is going to take you into a realm you never thought existed. I'm going to put the supernatural in your life. I'm going to let you carry an anointing that will change the world. I see the master plan. God knows. Somebody say, God knows. If you ever had the revelation that God knows all about you, he not only knows your yesterday, it's easy to realize that he knows our yesterday because we've already lived it. It's easy to think in our heart and our mind that God knows where we've been because we've already walked through it. Sometimes it's hard to grasp that he knows where we're at because we're fighting the good fight of faith. But it's really hard sometimes to really grasp that he knows our future. But this timeless and this spaceless God not only sees, he not only hears, but he knows. He knows where you're at, he knows where you've been, and he knows where you're going. But here's what you also have to understand. God is. Oh, what is he? Whatever you need. 
If you need a miracle in your home, he is. If you need a miracle in your finance, he is. If you need a miracle in your physical body, he is. If you need peace in your mind, he is. If you need a tr- a peace in your trouble, so he is. Whatever you need, he is. There's a promise in this book for everything you will ever need. There is no question he cannot answer. There is no path that he cannot make straight. There is no way that he cannot carve out. He is. He not only sees where you're at, he not only hears what you say, he only not only knows where you're going, but he is what you need. And Mary and Joseph would find that in this stable that day when the kingdom of heaven would invade the earth. And the Bible said every promise of an Old Testament will now be fulfilled. And God has them at the right place, at the right time, for the right season. And the Bible said in this moment the heavens begin to open. What if this Christmas season that the God that is would open the heavens in our life here at City Life Church in Tampa, Florida and everything you have been praying about, everything that you need everything that you wanted would begin to reveal itself, every word that God has spoken about you, maybe not just in the last few days but over the last decade, over the last 20 years would begin to come together sometimes it happens in the least likely of places, nobody thought anything good would come out of Bethlehem, Bethlehem was a town that had been written off but when the king of glory arrived he says I'll show you what I can do with places of nothing with people that everybody counted out with circumstances that no one sees any value in and God begins to reveal himself the heavens begin to open shepherds that are out in a field begin to see angels begins to hear a heavenly choir that begins to declare that the peace of God that is in heaven is now invading the earth And the favor of God is resting on those that believe. Wow. The peace is going to cause me to believe that the Messiah and the King of the world and the King of kings is lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. Because sometimes the greatest gifts are not what they appear. The presence of him invading our life is maybe not what we thought. The promises of an Old Testament now are laying in a manger wrapped in clothes given to an ordinary family. And when you understand that God is working and that God knows and that his presence and the gift of his presence is invading our moment. You know, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says this. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This is what he says. Don't worry about temporal things because my presence is here. There's two things he tells us. He said, I will never leave you. That refers to the physical sense. I'm where you're at. You can't see me, but I'm there. I'm in every moment of your day. That's scary sometimes, isn't it? I'm where you're at. That's the physical sense. God is where you're at. You're never alone. You may be home alone, but you're never alone. You may feel like you're wandering through life alone because I told you, you can sit in a crowded room and still feel alone. You can feel still heavy and discouraged. You're never alone. When he talks about that he will never leave us, that refers to a physical sense. He's where we're at. He's omnipresent. But then he says this, I will never forsake you. This phrase right here simply means he will never turn his face from us. He will never forsake us in our emotions. He will never leave us spiritually. I will never forsake you. That's why David said, please don't turn your face from me. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. I I, I can have people come and go, but I need you in my life. My life is all about pursuing your presence. He said, I will never leave you present. I will never leave you physically, but I will not leave you emotionally. See, you can be with someone in this room, but not emotionally connected to them. You can be physically with somebody today you're sitting with. 
but no connection or no heart connection. He said, I will not leave you. I will not turn my face from you. I will not separate my heart from you. I will not turn from what I'm doing in your life. And then he he begins to let us know that the result is you're never alone. People may come and go. You may feel like you're isolated right now. You may even be in this room today or surrounded by family, but in your heart you still feel all alone. But what he's telling us in Hebrew, he said, you know what, don't worry about it. Don't get moved by all these things around you. Don't let temporal things drive you. I'm always there, but not only am I always there physically, I'm always connected to you in the spirit. And I love what the Hebrew, the, the, how the message Bible says it. This is what it says in the message Bible. Don't be obsessed with getting more material things. Be relaxed with what you have. Since God assured us, I will never let you down. Never walk off and leave you. We can boldly quote, God is there ready to help. I am fearless no matter what. Who or what can get to me? Who or what can get to me? God's got this. That's why Romans tells us in verse 28 of chapter 8. He said, know this, that all things are working together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. That's what's happening in this passage. We have Zechariah, Elizabeth, we have Mary, we have Joseph, and God is bringing all of these moments together. We have a king that does not love God sitting on a throne that declares a census, but God says, I'm going to use those decrees for a master plan, and I'm going to weave it all together, and at the end of these moments, I'm going to deliver purpose. At the end of all these little segments and these encounters of individual people I'm going to weave them together with the master plan and I believe this God is taking your story and your story and your story and my story and he's weaving it all together today because the gift of his presence changes everything it changes a manger into a throne it changes into a barn into a castle that a king would live in it changes an ordinary home into a place of the supernatural and what you have to understand the greatest gift he gave us it was his presence in the earth it was his presence arriving God himself Emmanuel God with us poured himself into the earth and it changed everything and it's still the same today when God shows up everything changes in our alone moments we invite him in in our alone places we say God we know you're near in our broken places we say God I know you're near the broken hearted according to the word of God in our trouble moment we know that the word says that he's a very present and help in a time of trouble so we know this he is present and the greatest gift that he has ever given is his present from a baby in a manger to the miracle worker that walked the streets of Galilee to the one that picked up a rugged cross took it up a hill and finally declared it is finished this God that showed up is still showing up and this God that is is still is he never changes he said I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you and that's why I can be confident that the peace of heaven is still reigning in the earth and those that grasp the peace of heaven walk in the favor of the kingdom. Why? Because there was a baby that came and there was a God that walked the earth and there was a God that declared to hell, you have been defeated. So in these alone moments, the God of Christmas, the Jesus of the manger, the one that did many miracles is alive and well in Tampa, Florida and you are never alone. The greatest gift is his presence but don't judge the gift by its wrapping some of the greatest places in my life is when I could not see him working some of the greatest moments of the kingdom in my journey is when I did not realize he was present but I look back I told you that This year would be a year of 2020 vision. But for many, it's going to be hindsight. God, you did this. Oh, and you did this. And you connected me here. And you aligned this. God aligned everything that Joseph and Mary needed to get to a prophetic moment in Bethlehem. God aligned everything that was needed to get this couple in alignment with the prophetic word they were carrying. So at the right time, the angels would be ready to deliver a message to mere shepherds in a field. They would come and witness and testify about the Savior's birth. 
The heavens and the stars would be aligned for this very moment to gaze and stand still over a manger so that when the word of God and the presence would be delivered, that it would penetrate the earth and begin to release the supernatural. And the good news is he's still delivering his presence in unlikely places with unlikely people. The greatest gift he gives is the gift of presence. Now listen, the greatest gift you can give is the gift of presence. That you give yourself back to him. And when he calls, you're present. Mary said, I'm ready. I don't understand it all. But be it unto me. According to your word presence just showing up God I don't know but I'm here this manger wasn't what I expected this barn wasn't the plan but I'm here this journey wasn't the journey that I planned for but I'm here the gift of presence one of the greatest gifts you can give to your family in this busy season in this busy life is the gift of presence. You ever been at a dinner table, maybe at a restaurant, and you looked around and everybody was on their cell phone? I've been there. We've done that. I walked in Starbucks the other day and two girls were sitting at a little small table and they were both texting. I stopped and said, are you texting each other? They looked at me like I was crazy. I was just joking. They're only a foot apart. Is the gift of presence. Put your phone down. Just be in the moment. God said, I'm in the moment. I will never leave you. I'll never turn my face from you. Don't worry about all this temporal stuff. It'll work out. I've got this. What can defeat you? What can rob you of your joy? Be at peace. Because when my presence arrives, the peace of heaven invades the earth. When I arrive, those that grasp the peace of heaven walk in the favor of the kingdom. God always has a master plan. And he always brings it together by the gift of his presence. I'm believing his presence is going to wrap up 2020. His presence is going to make this year make sense. His presence is going to allow you that the lost job was all a setup for a better job. His presence is going to remind you that the stress in your family is eventually going to draw you closer. His presence is going to remind you that this present circumstance is not the end of the journey. But at the end, you win. Because the alpha God, the starting God, the beginning God, is also the omega God. The God that has the final word. The God that puts the last period in place. You know, I read a story about a young man that grew up in a home with a single father. His mo mother had died at an early age. The father was very, very successful. And the father was consumed with work and most of their relationship was distant. Son threw himself into sports and finally graduated from high school. Then went on to college. The father had an experience while the son was at college with Jesus. And it changed everything. His son was getting ready to graduate from college, and he asked his son, he said, son, what do you want when you graduate? Whatever you want, you tell me. He said immediately his son knew because he had his eye on a convertible sports car he had seen on a line. And he showed his dad a picture. He told his dad where the place was. He told him the exact car, the exact color, and he just knew he was going to get that car. Every time he looked at the days counting down to graduation, he said he thought of that car. Finally, graduation came, and after graduation, they went back home, and they walked in the father's study, and the father handed the young man a box. The young man was so excited, thought there was going to be keys in the box. He ripped open the box, and in the box, there was a Bible. He immediately became angry. All the suppression of past hurt began to rise. All of the, all of the chasm of Distance between him and his father began to surface. He threw the box down, began to yell at his father, began to curse at his father, went upstairs, got his stuff, left the house, and a distance began to grow between the father and the son. The son finally, uh, after establishing a career, got married, 
had grandchildren, the father not invited to the wedding, the father never being around his grandchildren. Finally, the son got word that the father was dying. And he sent word to the son that he would love to see him before he died. The son made plans to go. And before he could get there, the father passed. He said when he walked back into the house after his father had passed, there to mourn and bury his father, he walked back in the house after all of that was done. He said he just walked through the house, finally walked in his father's study and sat at the desk. He said, I looked over and that box was sitting on the shelf. He said, I grabbed the box and he said, I opened it. And I saw the black Bible with my name on it. And he said, when I opened the Bible, there was a bookmark. And the bookmark said, if we as earthly fathers know how to give good gifts, how much more does our heavenly father know? And then there was a little note inscribed. It said, son, I could give you the world, but this book has every answer. But then he said, I looked down and there was a check made out to me. And the check was blank. He said, go buy your car and enjoy it. What he didn't understand, the invitation to what was in that box would give him everything he desires. And when I read that story, I thought, how many times is there an invitation to God's presence, an invitation to his word, an invitation to moments that would unlock things that I could not get on my own, things that I really have no way to obtain by myself. What happened in that manger on that Christmas night was an ordinary couple carried a promise that was bigger than them. They really could not fathom that what they were caring would change eternity, would change the redemptive plan of mankind. They didn't really understand of what all was happening, but when God showed up, when Emmanuel invaded the earth, when his presence was given to those that young couple in that barn, and when they wrapped that baby in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, in those swaddling clothes was the king of glory. And what you have to understand, even though you're, you're, the thing you're carrying may be bigger than you, and the place you're walking may overwhelm you. God sees and God hears and God knows, but ultimately God is. He said, I can answer every prayer. I can bear every burden. I can change every circumstance. I can go before you and fight every battle. I am. I am. I am enough. I'm enough at those alone moments. I'm enough at those places you cannot figure out. And when you ever believe that and you take God, the God of the Bible, at his word, you walk with the confidence knowing that if I have to get to Bethlehem, if I have to get through that door, God is enough to make it all happen. So I'm praying this Christmas season that the God that is and the God that knows and the God that hears and the God that sees, it would be more real in our life and that the Jesus of Christmas would begin to reign brighter in each of us and in this church than ever before and we would walk out of this season into the next season and we would declare Jesus is. He is enough for this world. He's enough there's peace there's a plan there's purpose come on stand with me this morning I want you to know this Jesus is whatever you need this Christmas season he is maybe you're at church online and you feel alone he is he knows he sees he hears and never judge his presence by the wrapping of the moment. Because a manger could not keep or define Jesus. Swaddling clothes would not be the garment that he would always wear. The whimpers of a baby would eventually change the declarations of the supernatural. And would speak destiny to the believer. So never judge a gift by its wrapping. If I wrapped a diamond ring in an old paper bag. In just an ordinary book. That maybe cost 15 or 20 dollars. In a beautiful box with a bow. And I set both of them before you. Most of you. Most of us. If we had to choose which gift we would take to be our gift, we would choose the one that had all of the wrapping and all of the splendor and all of the bling. 
But the real value many times is in things that you cannot see the value in. The very first miracle Jesus ever did was this. The very first one. And I believe it set precedence for what was to come. The Bible said he showed up at a wedding. The Bible said when he showed up at the wedding, they were out of wine. Wine was what really showed that the family had prepared for this moment. And the journey had been long to get to this moment. They were out of wine. Jesus' mother comes to him and says, Son, we need you. The party's not near from being over, but we're out of wine. Shame, embarrassment is going to be upon this family. Aren't you glad that he's so good at just tearing back shame and covering us from being labeled? And Jesus did something. He said, sit, set six water pots up. And then he tells them, he says, pour water in. Now they've partied for a long time, but they're not going to convince anybody that water is wine. He said, pour water in. They did what he asked. And then he looked at them in a moment and said, draw out now. The Bible said they took a drawing cup and drew out wine even though they saw water go in. And they took it to the governor of the feast. He tasted the wine and he looked at them in marvel, almost in celebratory tone. And he said, most people, ordinary people, common people, average people, they put out the best wine first. And they saved the weak stuff till the last, but not you. You have saved the best till last. But I love what this one little phrase says. Only the servants knew what had happened. And sometimes you're the only one that knows what went in. Sometimes you're the only one that knows all the hell you had to battle to get to this moment. Sometimes you're the only one that knows the alone moments you had to walk through. Sometimes you're the only one that knows all that went into this season. And you've just barely made it to this moment. But God knows. And eventually he will tell you, draw out. Because what you see go in is not what is coming out. Because the minute I showed up to the party, everything changed. The minute my presence invaded this moment, everything changed. And I believe it for some of you. It's been a battle just to get to church today. It's been a battle just to log on today. But what you saw go in is not what's coming out. Peace is on the way. Favor is on the way. Purpose is on the way. The gift of Christmas is on the way. The King of Glory is alive. So Father, I pray today that your presence would be our portion, would be our gift. The greatest gift. And you would invade every life and every family, every home, every moment, every circumstance. You would challenge us with your presence and change us by your presence. And Father, I pray that just that reality that you are enough would be in our heart and our spirit, knowing you will never leave us nor forsake us. You are here. And Father, I pray that we would be reminded because of your presence, we can now be present. We can give of ourselves, not only to you, but those around us. And Father, I pray that we would not look at the moments and be discouraged because we do not see you there. Emmanuel, God with us, is ever present. He is here. He is here. Maybe you just need right where you're at to invite him in once again. Say, God, I know you're near. I know you're here. I know you're present. And in your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your presence, there is purpose and direction. In your purpose, In your presence, there is prosperity and favor. You are here. Let's just worship for a moment.
Come on, lift your hands wherever you're at today. Open you your hearts. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're touching everything. I serve an amazing God. Oh, come on. Do you serve a God who's present in your life? Amen. Amen. What an incredible, incredible word that pastor delivered today with nobody moving around, nobody leaving. If you would just give us just a few moments today that God's presence is in this place, that Jesus is here right now, and that the greatest thing that you could ever give him is your presence. And that today, if you do not have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that there is no better time than right now. That there's no better season than right now. That this whole Christmas season that we celebrate, Jesus coming, being born in a manger, it's all for this one moment right here. And it's for you to come into relationship with Jesus. And so if that's you today, whether you're in person, or you're worshiping with us 
today from church online that today you can give Jesus your all and invite him into your life. Some of you in here today, you need to rededicate your life right now because you have not given him your presence, that you've been absent, you've gotten away from him, and today you can come back into relationship with Jesus. So if that's you today, whether you need to accept him into your life for the first time or you need to rededicate your life, just say this prayer after me. Just say, Jesus, I need you. Today I give you my all. And I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to free me. Jesus, take the guilt and the shame of my past away. And would you replace it with grace and mercy and your love? Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. City Life, would you give God praise today for all of those who prayed that prayer? Oh, come on. Let's celebrate today. Lives were changed. Amen. Amen. Never forget that the greatest gift that was ever given was the gift of presence. That the greatest gift that you can give is the gift of presence. That you would leave this place today and be encouraged. That you would be present in your relationship with Jesus. Present in your relationship with with your family and present in every moment that you're in. City Life, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to remind you as you get ready to leave and um, uh, church online, don't log off yet. I've got something for you, but I want to remind you as you leave, we have our angel tree out in the back. Make a difference today in the life of a child this Christmas season. If you're worshiping with us, church online, you can do the same thing. You may not be here to be able to grab an ornament off the tree, but you can still take part in that. And I also want to mention to all my church online family that our Christmas Eve service is coming up this Christmas Eve, 4 o'clock. And we would love for you to join us for our candlelight service and a time of communion. That on our website we have a link for you to be able to go and to click on there to let us know that you will be attending. And we want to send you everything that you would need to be able to join in with us for our candlelight service, for our communion. We want to send it all to you and your family. So go there, register, um, give us your address, and we will be sending those elements out to you. It's on our events page on our website. And for all of you who's going to be joining us in person, you do not have to register to be here in person, but we would love it if you would just let us know that you're coming. You as well can go to our events page. Click on Christmas Eve in person. Let us know you're coming just so that we can make sure that we have adequate space um, for all of us to be able to worship um, freely but also safely. And so um, just give us a heads up that you're coming. And um, we are excited about this night, so don't miss out on it. Church Online, we love you and we want you to be a part of it in every way possible. So let us know. Um, City Life, are you glad that you came to church today? <laughs> Amen. Are you glad to be a part of a church? City Life Church, amen. Amen. Making a difference. Making a difference. City Life, we love you. Our church online family, we love you. We pray that you guys have an amazing week. Let me pray for you today as you be released. Father, we thank you so much for today. Father, we thank you for your word. For the great reminder, God, that in this season, that the greatest gift was presence. So the greatest gift we can give is presence. So, Father, as we leave this place, God, that we would be that to other people, God, that we would be that to our family, that we would be that to our coworkers. And Father, we just give you the praise and the glory. God, we love you. We thank you. In your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. City Life, we love you. Go with God as he goes with you. We'll see you next Sunday.